What's good, Renegade Nation? Before we begin the video, I'd like to give a big shout out to our most recent Patreon supporters, Ryan Towers, Ryan, Noldaru, Shoko, Paid Bill, and Nick Sanchez. Thank you all so much for your support. And if you want to support us on Patreon, feel free to click the link below in the description to find out more. Thanks again. It sucks. Good night, everybody. Okay, 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 okay. No, I... All right. You know, okay, you can see the length of this video and you know that that's not the end of the video. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, 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 whatever. Um, Jesus. Okay. This is... This is a bad movie. Not not even like a, a, a good bad movie. It's just a bad movie. You see... A good bad movie is something like Maximum Overdrive, where I have no previous knowledge of the characters or anything like that, and whenever stupid shit happens, I can laugh at it because I know I don't know these characters and I never will care about these characters. Wolverine is a character I loved in the comic books, I loved in the TV show, and so far, in terms of the films, loved in the films. Hugh Jackman was perfect. When it came to playing Wolverine. Too ta a little too tall, according to what most people say. But still, a really, really well done, a really, really well done uh, performance. And then this happened. X-Men Origins Wolverine. You've never seen this, have you? Nope. Oh, my God. Okay. There's some dumb shit in this, man. I mean... Given we've witnessed some dumb shit already, I mean, you know, it's it's the X-Men franchise. You know, there's going to be some silly moments. But at the same time, it's just like, yeah, but it couldn't get any worse. At least that's what I thought until I saw this. Huh. Hugh Jackman is still Wolverine, which is good. And his brother is now played by, and er, actually that's another thing that kind of shoehorned in that doesn't make as much sense but it well not shoehorned in but it, it, I believe there is a comic that has that as part of his origin story but Sabretooth from the first film uh, is recast in this by a good actor as well Leah Schreiber but um, the problem is uh, he's now Wolverine's older brother I'm assuming that wasn't the case in the comics <sighs> In most cases, no, but I believe in certain continuums, yes. But as far as as far as their rivalry, you know, their most heated of rivalries, yeah, I uh, yeah, it was just it was just them not liking each other. But I there's so much wrong with this film. Its presentation, how it's filmed, its ending, its dialogue. There's some shit dialogue in this, dude. I swear. A five-year-old could come up with better shit to say. And also one of the worst interpretations of Gambit ever. Instead, it's uh, kind of what I heard about that new Wolfenstein game is the dialogue in it's so fucking bad. <laughs> it's repetitive as fuck, dude. I mean, they, I mean, the, all the twins do is they repeat the same line over and over again whenever they get the kill. It's like, it's not just yeah, that, but I good saw, good job, sis. I saw some of the stuff they were saying, and it was just so cringy. And then, not to mention, they apparently just fucked up like the entirety of the way the game plays and everything in different ways. In Le some ways, yeah. Level gated parts of the game made it so you have two different types of ammo that don't even make sense because you have to use them on different types of enemy. This enemies that don't even make sense. Yeah, so, but, yeah. yeah. That's a different story. That's the story for another time. Yeah. But... Yeah, I know all about dialogue that's just so shitty. But there was so much that was good about this film that I thought should have worked. Number one, them doing a more Wolverine. More Wolverine, to me, is great. Uh, two, they had a good cast for for a lot of the people, for a lot of the, uh, a lot of the characters. I mean... They had Ryan Reynolds cast as Deadpool, a wisecracking asshat who, honestly, is a really good assassin. But I already know how they screwed that up in this. Mm-hmm. 
And then, of course, you had... Uh, you had the Merc with a mouth, and they sewed his mouth shut, so... Yeah. And then, of course, uh, Kevin Durant as... Uh, or not Kevin Durant. Uh, Kevin Durand. Sorry. Uh, he's Canadian. <laughs> uh, as uh, as the Blob, which... I mean, for how, for how it looked, I thought he looked really good, really good, but... The way they mess up so many characters, and they... And a lot of characters are pointless... Including the inclusion of Gambit, which I think they just threw in here because it's like, hey, it's Gambit. Check it out. It's Gambit. Y'all want a Gambit, right? Here's Gambit. But he's not played by a Southerner, has no Southern accent, and he's played by a Canadian heartthrob by the name of Taylor Kitsch. Wow. Thunder rolls as soon as I mention his name. Let's, <laughs> let's, see, let, let's, see, if, let's see if it works again. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Taylor Kitsch. No, nothing nope, that time. Just a coincidence. Yeah, just a coink, I think. Oh well. So anyway, we uh we're gonna be watching this uh nostalgia critic review of X Men Origins Wolverine. Assuming the power stays on. Assuming yeah, assuming the power stays on. <laughs> if the power goes off, then you'll probably never see this video. And this'll all be for naught. But yeah. that's how it goes. Hopefully not. Hopefully. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Alright. All right, there we go. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Couldn't cross my fingers for some reason. It was just like they're getting stuck right here. I think my knuckle is just like, yeah. I, my fingers are like really, are like oh, really right. stiff now. Let's see if I can do a thing. Oh, yep. His fingers are very dexterous. Mine are very stiff where I've, I've been punching concrete walls and people's faces and shit like that. <laughs> but, all right. Let's get to it. Here we go. Doug, we're here to suffer with you, buddy. This episode brought to you by Devil May Cry oh, 5. Devil May Cry 5, really? Action Complete with game the storm re- as omens of the horrible things to come. Get M for Mature. Wait. Now available on Xbox Hold One. Hold on. For some reason, it's not wanting to play. It's not playing the audio through the TV. That's weird. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Are you sure there is? Is there audio? Yeah. Look. Oh, yeah. It's running on there, but it's not. we can't hear it. What the fuck? That's look. weird. It was working a minute ago. And you turn the TV off and turn it back on. Technical difficulties, 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 technical difficulties. Come on. That was a technical turn difficulty back on. song. I hope you enjoy. Technical difficulties, technical difficulties, difficulties, technical difficulties. All right. Are you going to work this time? You gonna work this time? Please say yes. What the fuck? Nope. Hold on, hold on. All right, edit. What in the fuck? Well, now I don't see any audio capture in there except for our microphones. Jesus Christ. Check the uh, main audio thingy. Okay, going through there. Oh. Oh. So, hey, there we go. Finally. Holy shit. Uh, we're going to save that. At, that's actually one I had. Uh, that's a brand new one that just came out. So I'm not going to. Yeah. I'm not going to play that. All right. This episode brought to you by. De- no. All right. Edit. It's fixed. Double make five. Hey, five. there we go. Over the top action film game rated M for Mature. Now available Great on video Xbox game. One. Yes. Great video game. Very cool. Right. I played it on stream. You should check it out. Yeah. Let me it's know if you want me to on, do a second Yeah, just don't play it, it on PlayStation 4 because yeah. of the gratuitous censorship. Uh, Completely unnecessary censorship, too. Yeah. All it is is they censor butt cracks. Because they can't accept uh, the human anatomy. Mm-hmm. I wish I understood more about this intro. Huh? I wish I understood more about this intro. Well, 
I can explain a fair amount of it. Uh, we'll do it later. Okay, another time. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember it so you don't have to. And welcome to the final installment of X Month. Well, with X-Men The Last Stand leaving the bad taste of animanium dick in most people's mouths, it only made sense to cut out the middle X-Man, so to speak, and focus on the one that people loved the most. Even before the movies, Wolverine had always proven to be X-Men's most popular character, yeah. even spawning his own successful comic series. So it was decided a new movie series called X-Men Origins was to begin, each film going into the backstory of a different mutant. There was actually talks for a while of Ian McKellen doing an X-Men Origins Magneto. I'm guessing after this but movie bomb, that didn't happen. see how their most popular character, Wolverine, fared with his own film. Well, let me tell you, if this is what they do with their most popular characters, I'd hate to see what they do with the shit-stained body parts of their unpopular ones. <laughs> X-Men fans have their differences, but one thing they can all agree on is X-Men Origins Wolverine sucks. What should have been the easiest movie to make the most awesome, badass, and fun became yeah. the most inconsistent, dull, and downright baffling in terms of story and character choices. Most yeah. X-Men fans and non-X-Men fans agree it's the worst of the movies. And we're here to analyze how this middle claw of a flick happened. Let's wrap up X-Month the right way. Well, all way. This is X-Men Origins Wolverine. It opens up in 1845. Well, my knowledge of Wolverine only goes back to 1974, so I guess I just have to judge it less as an adaptation and more as a shitty movie. We see a young Logan as we discover his original name is Jimmy. So wait, Jimmy? We're James, Jimmy. James Howlett. Who is that? God, I so wish they retitled this now. As his house is broken <laughs> to when a stranger apparently killed his father. The kid, for the most part, plays a young Wolverine pretty well, but you have to watch out when the person in charge directs you poorly in a shot. <laughs> yep, that's the one. He's dead, yep. Jim. This kid should have a therapy session with the one from Christmas Story Live. Oh, the scary, hilarious <laughs> consequences of bad direction. He extends out his bone claw. Tell me that's the name of a D&D character or a wrestler. Okay, good. And he stabs the man to death. But the man reveals that he was his father all along. So... <laughs> Well, best dive into these characters we just met to appreciate why this is so dramatic, or we're just leaving before we establish why we're supposed to care. Get used to that. It looks like his brother Victor will later become Sabretooth. Okay, that I do need clarification on. Okay, good. What were you thinking? Run away into a title sequence where they show every <laughs> war they ever signed up for. Marvel Civil War, Saving Private Ryan Reynolds, X-Men Apocalypse Now. And through all of it, we're going to grow fast into Hugh Jackman and just kind of stayed that age for the next hundred years. Until these two movies and then suddenly, white hair. And Sabretooth grew up into Lee Shriver, who finally perfected his dolphin jump. <laughs> In all seriousness, the credits are probably the best part of the movie. They are, Which really. Saying that out loud makes me realize how much trouble we're in. <laughs> They're captured, though, and approached by William Stryker, played this time by Danny Houston. Your sentence was carried out by a firing squad of 10 hundred hours. You tickled. Who offers them the chance of a lifetime? I'm putting together a special team with special privileges. I'm calling it the Ass Avengers. They of course agree, and if you were to tell me the guy on this plane most likely to get a game-changing Marvel movie would be the one from The Proposal, I'd ask how you did things so wrong yet so right at the same time. It's funny, <laughs> weird. It's probably not as intimidating as having a gun or fingernails of a bag lady. To the film's credit, <laughs> it is mostly cast well. Shriver's a decent saber too. Yes. We know Ryan Reynolds will be a good Deadpool. Yes. And maybe Wolverine listens to Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> Will I Am was an Nigeria, interesting one. Where they tried to keep a low profile, walking like the poster for every Expendables movie. Yeah. Kevin Durand cool. as the blob was cool. Powers to both bunny people to death. <laughs> the enemy stops them in the elevator, though. They took the elevator! And Deadpool reveals his mutant power is using Guntana. An email said your prince was in trouble. We're here to transfer funds! <laughs> I want this, but that is nothing. A souvenir. It looks like they're after a rock that the crime lord said was from a small village and he thought was just a useless souvenir. So, in hindsight, they could have just asked him for the damn thing instead of claiming so many goddamn lives. He says that it's sacred. Did he break his neck or adjust it? No, oh, thank you. Can you crack my back next? I'm done. Hey, you know what'd be 
pretty interesting, showing us how Sabretooth got his bloodlust. I mean, mm-hmm. it is called Origins, but we never goddamn see how these two became who they are. What yeah. happened when they ran away from home? They just went into war? How did that impact them as characters? How did it change them? What were they like before? What were they like after? The idea Questions behind an origin story, time. especially a prequel, is to see how their actions and environment shape who they are. Yes. But who they are in the first ten minutes is pretty much exactly who they are by the last ten minutes. Yes. The biggest change is from a little boy to a grown man, and that only lasts a minute. Stuff happens to them all throughout the movie, but we never see how it alters them in any way. This Wolverine is the exact same as this Wolverine. He just doesn't have metal claws. And he's called Jimmy. Jimmy, we can't just let you walk away. Take this for example. Jimmy leads the team and we cut to him years later in the mountains with a woman. Who the hell is she? I mean, her name is Kayla, but who the hell is she? We don't see how they met, how they know each other, what she's like. We just know they're suddenly together and they smile so lovingly at each other that she's clearly dead. Yeah. Was it the wars? Which one? Oh. Be it Civil World War Nam. I can't it's see Hugh Jackman ever slumming a performance, but even he doesn't seem as into it as usual. Look at his face here as he's being given the origin story of his name. He doesn't look like he's letting it sink in enough that it'll one day become his identity. He looks more like he's going through his grocery list in his head. So he told Gigawatsu that the moon had asked for flowers, and every night Milk, he looks at the sauce, string cheese, and <laughs> count chocolates and see. <laughs> He's not even hiding his accent half the time. So you're gonna take me to this island? Here you are. Have those powers over me? I ain't leaving here till you tell me where Victor is. I'm just gonna ask nicely. My lands go by. Come on, Bob. He sounds like an angry and constipated Rocco. Where I kill Creed, <laughs> Striker, and pretty much everyone you hate in this world. Let's put another shrimp on the Bobby. But Let's you not. Let's find like you'd remember her name if I said it and pour Kayla. fake blood all over her. I originally meant this as a joke, but as we find out later, that is what actually happens. If I can tell from a distance that's not real, how can this dumbass with heightened senses not pick that up? Even this supposed big emotional moment seems half-assed, as the music and his screaming seems randomly cut short. This whole film feels like it was written by a Google program. Protagonist befriends love interest for five minutes of screen time. Old friend betrays protagonist at exactly 30 minute mark. Protagonist screams for 5.1 seconds. This should equal you crying. Why are... Yeah, the directing of this film sucks! <laughs> Maybe Jesus Christ! Maybe they did write it with the Google program as an experiment. Fuck, I'm gonna get myself an aneurysm over this shit. Jesus. I'm having weird throat pains. I don't know if it's related to that or me smoking too much. Yes. Yeah. Why aren't you crying? You're not from around here, are you? Actually, my name's Sabretooth. I chose it based on a story where a spirit came down to Earth, and you know what? I chose it because it's cool. Why can't that be a thing? What the cat dragged in. Guys, whatever this is, Take it outside. Now, Skeeter, they ain't hurting nobody. Jimmy finds Sabretooth, and they have an amazingly bad action sequence that you can barely make out because it's shot and edited, I think, by an actual Wolverine. You literally... tickles, But a log, that's what takes the mighty Wolverine out of action. Where is he? Where is he? He wakes up in a hospital where Stryker approaches him just in time to do his Pacino. Six years. You show up! Nestis is dead! Where my children come to play with their toys! Stryker offers yeah. Jimmy a procedure to make him indestructible, despite him already being indestructible, by giving him an adamantium skeleton. Ah, I'm so glad we haven't seen this imagery yet. Hugh Jackman's acted this being experimented shtick so much, he's literally playing it in his sleep. Or dead, I believe that too. Well, I guess he can't die. We just can't resuscitate this movie. He wakes up, though, hearing that they want to erase his memory, and he goes after them. But first... A tasteful glimpse of me bottom for the light. <laughs> Do directors think 
could they just emphasize an X that makes a good X-Men movie? <laughs> it's gonna be a good reference. Three good uh, reference. Freaking nicest silver haired angels that offer parental advice to our main character. Though their kindness might be characterized as borderline insanity if you would give shelter to a naked man breathing heavily in your barn. It's cold. Yeah, it's usually bigger than that. Mm, just had a rough night. Well, I see no threat emulating from this. Feel free to stay in our home and play with my grandchildren. So Jimmy, despite using them earlier, apparently forgot he had claws as he looked incredibly surprised when they pop out of his knuckles. Well, he didn't really have time to take in that they... After he picked Yeah, that CG... Uh, actually, I saw Corridor Crew tear apart this scene right here and showed how bad the CG oh. was on the claws here. Yeah, it looks pretty shitty. Like, like right there, right there in the mirror. Look in the mirror uh, when he brings out the other set. Watch right here. Watch, watch uh, the front, the one closest to the mirror, jolt back a little bit. After you yoink them, <laughs> it's just like, oh god, the tracking. Up from Toontown. What is up with those effects? It looks like someone ripped off the fangs from the Tiger and Ice Age and glued them onto his hand. The first film had half the budget of this one, and they made them look okay. This yeah. Flick, I keep expecting cartoon faces to pop on them, like. Hi, Jimmy. Where are your claws? <laughs> Sorry. I swear I'm gonna pay for it. Well, logically, I should throw your crazy ass out, but we're Canadian. We have a stereotype to keep up. <laughs> Mostly. Oh. The old man gives Jimmy his son's jacket, who, thank God, also happened to be a muscle bound beefcake, as the missus brings in some refreshments for them. I brought you some. Oh dear, I'll have to make more. Weapon X is in the barn. Well, glad to know we elevated from Blue Sky Animation to DreamWorks Animation in the same film. Blow him to bits. Let's see if he can survive that. Uh, sir, he survived exactly that. You know, I'm not gonna lie, I was actually enjoying that few minutes with the old couple. That's probably why they got rid of it so fast. <laughs> we get a chase scene that on paper sounds pretty cool, with a chopper, motorcycle, and jeep flying around and blowing shit up. But once again, it's shot and edited Humbie. like a monkey, shaking you by the shoulders, going, ah, ah, ah. It's legitimately sad when the trailer holds longer on a shot than the actual movie does. It's funny how good innocent All right. people tend to die around you. By the way, if you're wondering if lighting the gas leading to a giant explosion and walking away without looking in 2009 was cliched, no. It no. was embarrassingly cliched. Yeah, at that point. At that point, yeah. Very, 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 very cliche. The only time I, I found it funny was in the was when they made fun of it. Devil May Cry uh, 5 is the most amazing game ever. You can do anything with it. Chop vegetables, clean the bathroom, get in fights with it. Sometimes it fights back. But mostly you just play it. Playing it is the best thing to do with it. Because it's a game. You know why this series is awesome, it's the fifth one for crying out loud. If you ever need to just slice and dice some demons while looking hella nice, this is the game for you. It features three demon hunters, each with a unique playstyle. You can play as Dante, Nero, or the mysterious new protagonist, V. With all three characters bringing equal amounts of swagger and skill, you can fight off demon hoarders with as much smoke and sexy style as you can imagine. Yeah. Because imagining devils crying is sexy. You don't need to take my word for it, but do, because it's me. <laughs> and even if you didn't, here's some other people that say things. Bleeding Cool calls it an elegant symphony of obliteration. That's amazing. Dual Shockers calls it one hell of a good time. Equally amazing. My cat says meow. Amazing. And Game Rank calls it a try the perfect action game. That's so amazing, I'm just gonna say the word amazing again, but in a slightly higher pitch. Amazing. So come on and get amazing. some demon ass with Devil May Cry 5. And remember, games play best on Xbox One. To get Devil May Cry 5, do not call Debatable. this number, but instead go to a video game store or purchase it online. Go now. Go now. Finish this video, actually, because, you know, I'm in it. But, you know, go now, afterwards, after you watch the video. I love that last right factoid right on the side, waiting, left side. Go. Smurfs are great at a color blind. wrong with you? It's an amazing game. Everyone knows it's an amazing game. We already got it. it. Do it. Yeah, what, what got sick? it on PC, bud. Are you sick? I already played this through This game it. can cure you. It's medicine. Devil May Cry 5 is medicine! I'm legally required to tell you that Devil May Cry 5 is not medicine, but it makes you feel so good that it's like medicine! What are you kind gonna of, do anyway? Yeah. You're sick! You might as well play video games! What's wrong with you? Go get it! It's your problem! Go! 
Go! Get on with it. I guarantee you behind the camera there was like a guy pointing a gun and I was like, Say it again. Up how no, say it again, this okay. This is turning into a disaster. Wolverine rides to Vegas where I'm not gonna lie, at this point I'd rather just see him gamble than carry out whatever mission he was on. Three Claw Stud, I totally watched that. I Mimi mean, Dukes knows. Fred Dukes? Developed a bit of eating disorder. We all got our coping mechanisms. Oh, yeah. So, you remember in X-Men a character called The Blob? One of the more famous foes whose mutant power was an indestructibly obese body? Well, no, he's just a dude who put on a lot of weight. Still a mutant, but his powers have absolutely nothing to do with his size. He just let himself go. It's like saying Superman is still an alien, but he doesn't have superhuman strength. He just mimicked pumping iron a lot. Come on, man, look at him. Blob. Blob had bitch tits. Get in my belly! You know how PC things are becoming? You think an actor who isn't overweight playing an overweight character would be called Fatface? Jimmy beats him up to get information on where Sabretooth and Stryker are, and it looks like the two of them are out hunting another mutant. A young Peter Badanovich! <laughs> Just remember when we meet up years later and I grow my hair blonde and I never talk. We are never to reference this. Blob says Jimmy can find another mutant who escapes Stryker's experiments named Gambit. I don't really know why he looks like Sawyer from Lost, but he gives us the only cool shot in the movie, so I have no choice but to like it. Two years I rotten in that hell and I never... <laughs> That's kind of funny too. Oh, tell yeah. me something, Jimmy. But still not as funny as when he calls a bat. You even know how to kill me. I'm gonna cut your goddamn head off. See if that works. He was literally just knocked out. How'd he get up there so fast? And I don't know aeronautics, but I'm pretty sure you can't helicopter down via cane the same way Dixie Kong does with her hair. You're Gambit! You and Dixie Kong should not be mentioned in the same sentence! <laughs> You're not wrong. Escapes as Jimmy and Gambit stay for honestly no reason to fight. Yeah, literally. There is literally no reason for this to happen. This is a cartoon. All that's missing is a Tom and Jerry scream when he falls. <laughs> yeah. He agrees to help Jimmy get Stryker as Stryker puts the finishing touches on his latest mutant experiment. A few more hours. And he will respond to my commands. Absolutely. We're gonna make Momo a reality urban legend, my ass! Ooh, Jesus Jimmy Christ. finally catches up with Stryker, and you gotta love how our lead is so unimpressive, he's not even worth a head turn. I've learned that nothing motivates the men in your family like revenge. But gasp, what's her face is still alive? Wow, that's so underwhelming and not worth shitting a care that even Jimmy doesn't know how to react to it. Uh, he just kind of awkwardly kneels and lets out a reverse quack. Wolverine. Uh, it's revealed that she worked with Stryker because he's holding her sister hostage, and her mutant power is she can touch people and influence them to think whatever she'd like. Now, on top of asking why the hell she doesn't just use that power to have Stryker hand her sister over, I mean, cry! From a storytelling right. standpoint, how cool yeah. it would have been Hot if we hole. saw them meet. She holds his hand, and from that point on, we have to rewatch the scene and ask, was this real love or just her mutant power? There could have been a brilliant dramatic setup. Yes! But because that... Again! Yes! God! How bad do you have to be to fuck this up? That would mean making a connection with the characters instead of just doing things. Gotta do this thing, gotta do this thing, gotta do this thing. We're developed now. Jimmy tells her exactly what he told Fox after seeing this movie. I'm just a fool about playing. So obviously it's time to fight those who wronged him or he walks away. Wolverine! You know, this is all so amazingly underwhelming. You gotta wonder what Stryker was talking about at the end of X2. Remember when he was bringing up his past? You're an animal then, you're an animal now. If you really knew about your past, what kind of person you were, the work we did together. We stole a rock, gave you some tiny tune claws, and this lady you barely know didn't die. We were animals, animals! I guess Sabretooth reveals why he suddenly betrayed his brother. Give me the adamantium. Test King. We had a deal! You would never survive the operation. So, over a hundred years of knowing this guy, and you totally betray him because you just wanted adamantium in your bones? Something the guy says wouldn't work anyway? I think Tenderheart and Grumpy Bear have a more complex rivalry than that! 
automatically returns and helps free all the mutant cameos, and yeah, let's get this over with. The mutant that was being worked on earlier was Deadpool. Wait, is that you? By God, it's like the comic leaped onto the screen. Striker finally figured out how to shut you up. But really. I, I know you're gonna y'all are gonna be mad at me for pausing this so damn much, but this is just how much I hate this fucking movie. I would prefer to think of the ending from Deadpool 2 happening here. Forget what else happens. Forget everything else. Just the ending where Deadpool comes in. Pow, 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 pow. I'm surprised he didn't do that, actually. I'm surprised they didn't do that, actually. Like, not only kills his Green Lantern self, but also stops this from happening as well. <laughs> well he did well he did in the mo- in the uh, in Deadpool two in the in the mid credits ending. Oh he did take this out? Yep. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, okay, he cool. did. Nice. Yeah. Honestly it's one of the funnier moments of that entire film. I could not stop laughing. Yeah. I was so happy. I was like, Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> but yeah, okay, sorry. Back to it. Really controlling. Can't keep one silent for long. And thank you. Hey, I'm just keeping a kid. <laughs> yes, okay. that's not thank what you. In this film, though, <laughs> but, oh my god, can you imagine every copy of this movie they made afterwards? They put that part in, and that's where it ends. They roll the credits and everything. Oh my god, Ryan Reynolds, get on that! <laughs> yes. Yes. Power is surgically given to him, the dumb. which is impossible. It hurts. As Sabretooth, right the hell out of nowhere, decides he likes Jimmy again, and they decide to fight him. Back to back! All this high-tech ingenuity and you have to type in your commands like a 1980s... So they turned him into Baraka? Effectively, yes. Got some great Spaceballs logic working here. Yep. It's a competition of which sucky effect can destroy the other. Toy Story claws or invaders in laser beams. Only the crappiest shall survive! They end up defeating him, but as Jimmy says, this isn't over. This doesn't change anything between us, Victor. We're brothers, and brothers look out for each other. No, unless your memory's erased and I go working for a magnet man, you know how it goes. Ugh. Who gives a dick is dying, though, and Jimmy goes to say goodbye. I love you. I'm so cold. Really? Ugh. Oh, look it. You don't even seem annoyed to be dying. You can say things all you want, movie, but unless you commit to it. <laughs> Striker shoots two animanium bullets into his head, and yep, that's twice they try to fake you out that he might die. Ooh, and here's another nail biter. Spider-Man might not be back in Endgame. See far from home. <clears throat> I should make you pull the trigger, but that would make us no better than you. Walk into your feet, bleed. Well, that'll result in tons of people dying, but why start making sense now? Uh, yeah, and this well, happens. hi there, Mr. Clean. Mighty glad to know you. You're safe. Okay. Uh, Who are you? Huh. Must have missed those on the x-ray. Also weird that Jimmy never told Xavier exactly what he did remember. Yeah, I woke up around a destroyed power plant on this exact date. Oh yes, I was totally there. With that starting point, I'm sure we can piece together where you came from. Oh, guess it doesn't matter. Good luck. Yeah, it was a shame that Gambit guy didn't get much screen time, but... I'm honestly glad he didn't get more screen time, because he was not a good Gambit. I'm sure he'll get another starring role in a big moneymaker. Ouch. And that was Damn. X-Men Origins Jimmy. I mean Wolverine. I mean... Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy! because this definitely was not Wolverine. Wolverine is one of the coolest characters in comic book history, but none of that would be reflected if you went off of this movie alone. It doesn't add up to the continuity of the films. It doesn't please any comic fans. It's way too boring and cliched to entertain newcomers. It's just a disaster. X-Men has had a shaky history in both comics and film, but when it comes to the absolute worst X-Men flick there is, you need look no further than X-Men Origins, Jimmy. And that was X-Month. I hope everybody had a good time. And... I'm ready! Hyper, what are you doing here? Oh, well, I was in the animated intro, so I just assumed I'd be flying around as Rogue. <gasps> oh, yeah, um, that, that, 
that was more of a style thing. Wait, so I'm, I'm not gonna be an X-Men? Well, aren't we all X-Men in our hearts? No. We are now. Congratulations! I'll make it up to you later. Just get out of here! <laughs> Bye, Hyper. So I hope you enjoyed X Month and. I'm ready. Oh, for God's oh, God. sake. I take offense at that. I'm not having us as the X Men. Then why'd you have us in the intro? I just told the animator to draw something cool. Yeah, that was cool. Now let's actually do it. I can't. X Month is over, so get out of here. Fine. Great. I'm ready. How did you even. I ah, ready it's for my dead. cameo as deadly. I'm not doing that. And besides, you didn't cameo anywhere else. Well, sure, I did. Here, look! You see? You always need a cameo from the creator. You didn't create the nostalgia critic. Sure I did. Look, when a man and a woman love each other very much... <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Dad! <laughs> We're here for next month. Oh my god, it's already over! <laughs> and you didn't invite us? Well, uh, it was your idea! Exactly. exactly! Oh my god, can you just go away before other people spontaneously appear in my corner? Ah! You false advertised critic! Yeah, none of us were an ex month. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll make it up to you all somehow. Oh, you mean by reviewing a movie starring a person you never wanted to talk about again? Stop right there! I know how this works. You bring up a movie or person I don't want to talk about, and once I talk about them, their picture pops up and I'm stuck reviewing it. Well, I'm not falling for it this time, so get out! Well, I think she was just talking about... Out! Out! Everybody out! Fireball! Out! Oh, it's oh, like Christmas with the Hitlers! Lousiest cameo I've ever had. <sighs> there, now I'm not bound to anything. I'm the nostalgia critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Damn it! Tommy, me what's up? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nice. <laughs> okay, so there was actually a line that I swear to God when I heard it in this movie, I'm actually surprised Doug didn't talk about it. It made, it made me cringe so hard I thought I was going to break my neck. Maybe he didn't want to cringe so hard he broke his neck. Maybe. Uh, it was the one where you see Stryker with the big gun and he loads up adamantium bullets and everything. And uh, the scientist who's there with him said, looks at him and says, you can't kill him. And then uh, he, he'll he just heal. You, you can't kill him. He'll just heal. And then Stryker looks up at her and says, well, maybe his memories won't grow back. Oh, just thinking about it hurts. Jesus. Why not say something more along the lines of, we'll see, or something like that. We'll see about that. To make it more, you, you know, not cringy as fuck. There's so much about this film that could change. I would have done a full rewrite Something like, it's like, you can't kill him. It's like, not if I don't try. Like yeah, something, you know. yeah so even that's better. Yeah, dude, anything would be better than the line that they used in the film. Well, maybe his memories won't grow back. Wow, way to kill the suspense on the entire freaking build-up to the con confrontation between you two. Hallelujah! Holy shit! Oh, where's the Tylenol? Holy shit. Oh, that hurts. He even gave the computer a weird aneurysm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's that weird font thing. Uh, there you go. Jesus Christ. But yeah, I didn't see that movie, and I don't think I will. Yeah, save yourself the suspense. If anything, we'll do like a riff on it. Do like a riff video where we look at it. And we're just like, it's like these claws brought to you by the Chinese. Uh, brought to you by a Chinese sweatshop. CG, a Chinese CG sweatshop. Or some guy living in his basement that was paid twenty dollars. Yeah, actually, Corridor Digital. They actually did. There, there's several times they've actually talked about how they would like to go back and redo CG on certain things. They actually redid. Have you ever seen this, uh, the Mummy and the Mummy Returns, the Brendan Fraser movies? Uh, yeah, the Mummy I've seen. I don't yeah, think, I don't remember if I ever saw Returns or not. Uh, it was the one with the Scorpion King. You know, the one with the Rock. That... Yeah, I never saw that one. Okay, okay. Well, there's a scene in it that has horrible CG. It's honestly like one of the most infamous horrible CG moments out there. Hmm. It's pretty much like a gigantic scorpion CG, uh, Dwayne Johnson, the Rock. And he comes out, and his face is just, ugh, looks <laughs> awful. Uh, Corridor Digital effectively said, you know what? Let's fix that. And they did. They went into After Effects and all their and all their special effects stuff, and they literally reworked the scene to where it looked ama It actually looked really good. God, you see, 
It's kind of like the channel that updated the Star Wars duel between. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Vader and I remember Obi-Wan. that. Yeah, I remember that. It's like because I mean that still holds up to an extent. Like the Star Wars movies are still pretty legit. Like, yeah, but uh, I mean obviously the effects are a little dated, and an update looks pretty cool. Well, I would okay. Here's what I had, pl- I had thought about uh, the Star Wars special edition movies, the ones where George Lucas went back and added shit in, changed shit, and all that. And did some really shitty CG parts. <laughs> Han shot first, dumbass. Mm-hmm. Han shot first. Yep. Okay? But what I would have expected from that was improvements in terms of special effects and not really adding anything else. So there were things that were improved, like... Well, no, they did. Um, they like did the, they the did. land speeders. Like, originally they did that effect by having, like, you they know, things Vaseline with wheels under... Yeah, they rubbed Vaseline on the film, and there was, like, a blurry spot underneath the speeder, and they yeah. CG'd that out and made it look a lot cleaner. Yeah, and then, of course, there was also... But then there uh, was, like, some uh, animals that were originally practical effects that they CG'd in, and they just looked fucking like they were pasted in. Yeah, <laughs> like that... On top you see, stuff like really that was, uh, was terrible. Yeah. But then there's also the one where uh the one where um it's the hoth battle in empire strikes back uh and the flying scenes are happening and you're like in there with the cock you know the pilot in the cockpit Mm -hmm. and they're flying around the uh the cockpit or the borders of the cockpit are translucent and you can see through them uh the you can actually like see the green screen background uh, through like through the uh, like through the 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 pilot like the the cockpit uh, window and everything. Oh, I never noticed that. Oh, dude! That's in shitty, the original though. cut, I I noticed it right away. I was like, ooh! But they updated it in uh, in Empire Strikes Back and uh, the special edition. And it looked good. There was stuff that they added in. Like I'm I'm glad that they added in more of the uh, of the snow beast in in Empire Strikes Back. I'm glad that they included that, but. There was just so much that was, uh, so much that was added in that just shouldn't have been. Yeah, Han shooting first, the biggest one. Yeah, that was dumb. Or, or, or Greedo shooting first. Yeah, Greedo shooting first. Han shot first. Han shot first. I don't care what anyone says. Han shot first. All right. Well, Han fought first. Yeah. So the the critic went over what a lot of people consider to be like the lower end of the X-Men movies. Uh, except for Apocalypse and now Dark Phoenix. If he ever does another X-Month, he'll have to talk about... He'll have to, He'll definitely have to talk about Dark Phoenix. Yeah. But I'd like to hear Doug's positive thoughts on uh, on Days of Future Past and uh, uh, X-Men First Class and, and, uh, and all that. I'd love to hear what he has to say about that. Oh, and also... X Men, uh, you know, uh, the Wolverine and Logan. I'd love to hear what he thinks about Logan, dude. Logan is probably my favorite X Men movie, or it's definitely okay. It's definitely my favorite that features like X Men characters, but in terms of, like an X Men movie, I probably still gotta say Days of Future Past is my favorite because it combines so much so effortlessly, and it and it worked. It worked for the most part. <sighs> God. I'm sorry I paused this uh, during Doug's review so much, guys. It's just, I cannot hold my contempt for this movie. I literally uh, was, like, seething with how bad this movie was. And, hmm. oh, that's a big one. Yeah, hey, we should probably end this before our video gets lost to the power yeah, going out. Yeah, so we're going to end this, and we're going to, uh, yeah, it's 9 o'clock, so probably going to go get something to eat, uh, and then after that, uh, I'm not sure. So... Hopefully we will see you all then, and until next time, if you want to see the original video, link is in the description down below. Check out Doug's channel, uh, Channel Awesome, and the Nostalgia Critic videos. He puts out pretty much a new one every week. Link to our Discord, yep. link to our Patreon. And also, don't forget There's to subscribe. There's a sub button, a bell. And, uh, There's a like button if you if you liked it, and a dislike button if you didn't. So. And comment down below, and until next time, we'll see you then. I'm Nate. I'm Nick. We'll see you then. Peace out.